Hello, I'm Dr. Barbara Yarn, and I am the lead author of the article, The Risk for Stroke and Myocardial Infarction After Herpes Zoster in Older Adults in a U.S. Community Population. It's in the January Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Stroke and MI after zoster, is that a reality? Is there an increased risk? Well, there have been several studies. Most of them have been done in Europe or in Asia, and there have been suggestions that there may be, but those suggestions and the larger studies have suggested it's only in people less than age 40, where zoster is actually not terribly common. We decided we wanted to look at zoster and its effects on stroke and MI risk in the adults 50 and over, the ones that are most likely to get shingles or herpes zoster. We used the community population of Olmsted County where we could get 98% of all people's visits for all health care. So we know that we really are capturing a huge portion of the people and of their visits. Certainly stroke and MI are things for which people make visits or if they have a fatal stroke or MI, they also come to the attention of healthcare services. Our study population is about 5,000 individuals who over the age of 50 and have had herpes zoster. What we did was take populations then of people who haven't had herpes zoster over the previous 10 years and look at their matching to those that have had zoster by age and by gender. We also look then for all of the comorbidities that can increase the risk for stroke and MI. Our population studies were done first for stroke and then for MI, and I'll talk about them separately. There's a 1.53 risk, that's the odds ratio, so a 50% increase risk of a stroke after an acute episode of herpes zoster in those 50 and older. That's accounting for all of the other risk factors. Now, when we looked at the later time points, if we didn't account for risk factors, then there was clearly an increased risk. But people with zoster have many more risk factors than those that don't have zoster. In fact, if you look at table one, it's really very interesting. It shows you the comparison of the presence of risk factors in the two groups and every single risk factor is statistically significantly more common in those that have had zoster. So you have to control for all of those risk factors. The bottom line with stroke, there does appear to be an increased risk in the first three months. In the study, we present a figure that is really very interesting. There's two parts to the figure. One is the risk uh, using a survival analysis of stroke after zoster, and the other is for MI after zoster. And if you look at these, you will see that there's an insert. We tried to enlarge uh, for the first three years because it's not always easy to see, but you'll see that there is a distinct increase. Now know that these survival analyses are not controlling for all the risk factors. There is clearly an increased risk. You can see how the curves separate for those with zoster and those without. When we did the same kind of analysis in people who had not had a previous myocardial infarction, the ones that had zoster did appear to have an increased risk. It was a small increase, about 10%. And when you use multiple different kinds of analyses, it wasn't robust across analysis. And when you control for all the risk factors for MI, it disappears. So we didn't find an increased risk of MI at any time after zoster, unlike some other studies which have said there may be an increased risk, but primarily in younger adults. There's a real problem with some of those studies because they weren't able to account for all those risk factors. 
And when you don't, you're talking sort of apples to oranges because the risk population, the zoster population, is clearly one that has many more chronic diseases. So why would this occur? Why would stroke be more common? Well, there are two theories. One is that it is direct contiguous progression of the virus into vessels that are in the CNS. And there are clearly studies that have shown that there are zoster viruses in blood vessels all over the CNS, uh, potentially. And there have been cases clearly linked where they took the biopsies and they could see the changes in the vessels and they could see the zoster or the VZV in the vessels themselves. So zoster is not just in nerves. Zoster appears to also affect vascular tissue. There are other studies that show it may also be in the GI tract. So we now are starting to think that zoster or shingles may not be just a neurological disease, it may be a systemic disease. And certainly those of you that have looked at and cared for patients that have shingles know they do have systemic symptoms frequently beyond just the localized pain. They have fatigue, myalgias, sometimes low-grade fevers, other kinds of problems. So zoster may be a systemic illness. The other thing that may cause it, besides the direct invasion, so to speak, of the vascular tissue, is the inflammatory response that occurs with an acute zoster episode. We know that with other serious illnesses, pneumonia, for example, there are also an increased risk of zoster and MI after those acute systemic types of infection. So, two possible explanations, vascular, direct vascular invasion, and the inflammatory response. Now, how do we prevent it? Well, we don't know for sure, but if we could prevent shingles, then probably we're going to prevent this increased short-term risk. And right now, we do have one immunization to prevent shingles, and hopefully we'll have a second soon. So we have an illness that we thought was localized to the nervous tissue causing a secondary condition and we have potential prevention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.